You're right there, it's Tim, goal five, time goal Mike again. Hope you're keeping well. Now, I brought a video out about uh, a week or two ago about a G5 RV, and uh, I just wanted to compare it at the time with a doublet antenna. G5 RV, if you remember, is about 102 foot long. What's that in metres? About 31 metres long. Uh, modelled it as a flat top, eight metres above the ground, fed with, um, well, sort of half and half, really, but just over 30 feet of 300 ohm ladder line and about 30 feet of RG58. I just wanted to compare that with um, a ladder line fed doublet with 450 ohm all the way into the shack into a balanced tuna. The same length, 102 foot in terms of the um, in terms of the actual antenna itself. And we're looking at about 60 feet, which is about 20 metres, isn't it? Uh, or thereabouts of 450 ohm. Now, we came to the conclusion at the time that uh, probably not, uh, uh, you know, too much of a surprise for you that the 450 ohm fed ladder line doublet had uh, a lot less loss, especially on 10 metres, where there was quite a horrendous SWR on the G5 RV. Uh, a few people came back to me uh, in the comments saying, well, come on, you're using RG58, you've got to be using better coax than that. And I thought, well, that's worth having a look at, isn't it? Will better coax make much of a difference? These were the, the losses uh, in dB, of course, uh, per band. And this is the uh, G5 RV, as I say, eight metres above ground, fed with 30.6 feet of 300 ohm ladder line, which is a fraction under 10 metres, probably about nine, nine and a half metres or so. And then uh, 30 feet of RG58U coax, again, about nine and a half metres long. And this is the combined feed line losses, not taking into account anything to do with tuners or balloons or anything, just looking at the feed line loss with the impedance and the SWR presented at the, at the feed point. And you can see, look, we have got some wide ranging figures in yellow there. Uh, note the uh, loss on 80 metres is about nearly 2.5 dB. We're over 2 dB as well on 17, 15 and 12. And of course, the elephant in the room was 10 metres where we're pushing towards a 7 dB loss, which, uh, you know, is, um, is is something to write home about, really. Uh, you're losing uh, over, uh, well, you, 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 you're, you're reducing your power by a factor of four. So that's not a good, start, a good, uh, good stat for us to look at. And of course, when we compared it with the 450 ohm ladder line fed doublet, it fared an awful lot better than that. In fact, uh, we were over 6 dB better. So that was the situation there. Now, if we, uh, if we move on, if we swap that RG58 run, the same run of 30 feet for other coax types, uh, according to the frequency, this is the improvement that we see. So if we look at RG8X, that's probably the next sort of uh, level of improvement in many ways from RG58. And you can see, look, at the improvement we see over RG58 per frequency is pretty negligible. Uh, the biggest improvement, unsurprisingly, is at the bottom there, 10 metres, but we're only talking just over half a dB. So RG8X doesn't seem to, seem to be the silver bullet that one or two people think it might be in this situation. Middle column, we've got RG213. This is where we have a um, an improvement. Now, by the way, these figures are all, of course, in dB. And these are the, uh, this, this is the, the, the um, figures in terms of the improvement over RG58 in terms of dB. So RG213 then, uh, we have a, you know, we have a better situation. In fact, the leap, the leap we see from RG8X to RG213, as we'll see in a minute, is actually bigger than the leap and improvement from RG213 to LMR400, you know, the real thick stuff. So that's an interesting point. Let's have a look back at this again. So RG213, we're seeing a bit of an improvement over RG58. Again, we're, you know, we're, we're only in fairly small fractional improvements. Till we get to 17 metres, uh, two thirds of a dB, three quarters of a dB at 15 and 12. Now we're pushing towards two dB improvement there in terms of loss on 10 meters. So we're beginning to see a, you know, a bit of a developing improvement here on 10 meters, at least with RG213. And if we looked at LMR 400, um, yeah, look again, look at, uh, at 80, uh, 40 and 20, not much of an improvement there really over RG58 because it was a decent, uh, decent match on those bands. If we look at 17 metres, we're pushing towards a dB improvement of RG58. Same for 15, same for 12. And on 10 metres, we're now nearly 3 dB better. So uh, we're only losing half our power effectively here, which is a much better improvement, isn't it, over RG, of the RG58. Um, 
But still, that leap, that improvement of 2.84 dB is less than um, a dB better than RG213. And of course, in terms of cost per meter, the RG213 is very likely to be quite a bit less expensive than LMR400. And by the way, I'm using these coax types because they're sort of, I'm just using them to benchmark it, but I know there are others in, uh, we can use. So SL7, for example, which is thinner than RG213, has often better shielding and is slightly less lossy than RG213. And I know there's others that we can look at, like Hyperflex 10, which is, I think, slightly better than LMR400. But I'm just looking at these as a sort of benchmark, okay? Um, so the question is, on the right-hand side, I've put there really at the bottom, is LMR400 really a necessity? Well, possibly not in this situation, because we're only using 30 feet of coax, and we'll come back to that point uh, a bit later. So as we can see, really, even on 10 metres, which is the main ba you know, band of contention, really, with the G5RV, um, we are gaining about 3 dB using LMR400 compared with the RG58. Okay. And with RG213, we're gaining about 2 dB. So it's whether or not you want to fork out the extra money um, for, for LMR400 over RG213 for basically a dB gain on just one band, where the other bands, if you look at the difference between RG213 and LMR400, pretty negligible, isn't it? If you look at the middle column and the right-hand column, those figures per band, not much difference there at all. In fact, we're looking at maybe a quarter of a dB uh, at the most, and uh, less than that on many of the bands. So, food for thought there. I wanted to compare now using the 450 ohm ladder line direct to the, um, direct to the balance tuner in the shack, compared with the RG58 with the 300 ohm and the LMR400 with the 300 ohm. So there we are, that's the difference. So if we actually go from the uh, 450 to tuner column and look at the far right column, which is 300 plus LMR400, you can see that basically, even if we put LMR400 in there instead of RG58 in that particular doublet, uh, in that particular G5RV, I should say, we're still not seeing uh, any performance getting, I think, too much, too near the 450 ohm rather than directly to the shack. On some bands, it doesn't seem to matter much, certainly on 40 and 20. Uh, we're still a DB down on 80, which isn't a disaster. We're about a DB down on the 450 ohm using LMR400 on 17. Uh, we're about 1.3 dB down on 15, uh, or a dB down on 12. But of course, the big thing is on 10 meters, even if we still go to the trouble of using LMR400 instead of RG58 with our G5RV, uh, we are still 3.6 dB worse off than bringing that 450 ohm ladder line directly into a balance tuner in the shack. That's on 10 meters. Now, if you don't care about 10 meters when you use a G5RV, then to be perfectly honest with you, you could probably get away with swapping into RG213 or LMR400 if you like. And uh, you probably wouldn't see a whole world of difference between that and using the 450 ohm into the into the tuner. Um, if, however, if you want to use 10 meters, then that is where you're going to see the uh, the biggest uh, the the the, you know, the the biggest uh, sort of issue there, because at the end of the day, you're going to be pushing 4 dB better off using the 450 ohm straight to the the shack balance tuner on 10 meters, and that's still you know, that's still something to chase. That's, that's still, a, still a decent improvement. I know people say it's only just over half an S unit, but, you know, if we're talking about it making some form of real world difference, well, there'll be situations, there'll be pileups, there'll be, there'll be contacts you just won't quite make in that situation. Don't forget the gain, the loss is both ways. It's transmit and receive. So, you know, it'll still affect you in terms of receive as well. So there you go. LMR 400, RG213, doesn't make a huge amount of real world difference to us. Um, improves things, of course, but does it uh, get near to beating the 450 ohm ladder line directly to the, the shack, to the bands tuner? No, especially still not on 10 meters when it comes to using the G5RV. So, in this situation, then, what are the main things to consider? Let's sum it up then, shall we? And in fact, and there's one or two things maybe we haven't uh, touched yet that we should be looking at. So, first of all, a much longer run say a 100 foot run, a 30 meter run plus of uh, coax, if you need to run that much, 
say for example your antennas at the bottom of the garden and your shacks at the you know in the house at the top of the top of the garden then if you've got a really long run of coax like that length then you will begin to see the benefit of using lower loss coax in that situation. We're only using a simulation with 30 feet, that's about nine and a half meters or so, or nine meters or so of, of coax, which, which really isn't a huge amount of run. Um, so some people will have a much longer uh, or need a much longer run of coax. And therefore, when you begin to have that sort of length of say 30 meters, 100 feet or so, then um, lower loss coax will make uh, begin to make a you know, bit of a difference for you. Um, a good balanced tuner, even if it's used, is not cheap. Now, again, you know, balanced tuners are, are not cheap, the good ones anyway. Uh, if you're looking to buy an old Dentron or get yourself a Palstar, I know there are many other good makes out there as well. I'm not sure about MFJ, I'll leave it up to you to, to take that risk. Uh, a lot of people use MFJs and like them, a lot of people use MFJs, and um, well, there we are, they don't. Um, but a good balanced tuner isn't cheap. But there again, you will ask yourself, how often are you going to actually buy a good balanced tuner? You know, uh, over over the lifetime of your, opera of your operating, you look after a good balanced tuner, it'll look after you, you know, and they tend to hold their value when they're second hand as well. Um, but if you actually have to buy a really, uh, a long run of really good coax, like, I don't know, Hyperflex 10, um, LMR 400, whatever it is you want to use, then that's not going to be cheap either, okay? And in fact, as we see there, uh, my fourth point, if you want to buy, um, if you need to, if you want to buy, say, uh, an equivalent run of 450 ohm ladder line, which is usually about 18 gauge, then it's not that expensive. Uh, and not as expensive, I should say, as really good low loss coax of the same run. So not only is it lower loss, it's actually less expensive as well. And um, there is a, one other setup we haven't considered yet. I might look at this in a separate video, actually. It's the, uh, it's the alternative doublet run, really, uh, which is uh, where you'd bring the ladder line almost into the shack, have a really good one-to-one -one current ballon um, just aside on your wall somewhere, maybe. By really good one-to-one -one current ballon, I mean one which has been specifically designed to handle a higher range of impedances. Some of the off-the-shelf current ballons I'm not going to name the makers, but they're quite well known, serve a purpose. But when it comes to handling the range of impedances you face with with a doublet, you need a really good chunky uh, chunky ballon to deal with it. Now, I use one from Ballon Designs. I'm not connected with them at all, but I use one from Ballon Designs, which uh, does a fantastic job. It's five kilowatt rated, to be honest. I'm never going to run that power, but it's really big and beefy enough not to ever get warm up, warmed up at all by having to work hard to deal with a range of impedances. Unlike maybe some cheaper balance that when you touch them after you've been using the, the, air, the antenna for a while and you go outside and you just touch the, the casing of the ballon, you can, you can feel it's getting warm. And that's not gonna do you or your, you know, your system any good really. So yeah, going back to this then, I mean, I, I would say you, the alternative would be to run the ladder line to a really good ballon, probably a one-to-one -one current ballon just outside the shack a really short run of low loss coax, like LMR 400 or something like that. Less than three meters if you can, the less the better, because the highest WR will then be, still be on that coax run. But if you keep it really short, you can put that into any then unbalanced ATU, like an LDG or something, doesn't matter what you want to use then really. You won't be able to use it into your internal tuners, uh, internal tuner on your rig, because they can only match up to three, four to one SWR and your tuner will be able to match a wider range of impedances than that. Up to about a thousand ohms, usually a lot of these tuners, these unbalanced tuners, sorry, uh, yes, unbalanced tuners, um, compared and down to, down to about six ohms, something like that. So they can match a fairly wide range of, of, of impedances, much more than the internal tuner on your rig will. Um, so there we are, so you can do that. And those, those unbalanced ATUs tend to be quite uh, a bit less expensive than the than the, the proper balance ATUs. So, um, and you, you, you're still gonna have in that setup I just described there, a must, uh, probably will, almost certainly in fact, have much less loss on your feed line system compared with the G5 RV because the run of coax you've got is appreciably less. You're using far more ladder line in your feed than you would with a G5 RV. And you're only using maybe six to ten feet two to three meters worth of coax to uh, to bring the feed line into the shack and then use your tuna
So food for thought then. Um, in short, uh, better coax does help. Does it help a huge amount? Not in this particular antenna situation, no. Um, and you need to fork out for really expensive coax? Well, it might reduce your losses a little bit and it might also provide you with better shielding against noise as well. There's that option too. But basically, overall, in this G5 RB situation, apart from 10 meters, there's not an awful lot in it. And uh, RG213 in this situation probably serves you just as well, really, in terms of cost and uh, how much benefit you get from buying really expensive coax for the point of really most bands of about a dB difference. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you liked what you saw. If you fancy subscribing, that'd be fantastic to have you on board. But more importantly than that, you stay safe. There'll be another video coming up here, by the way. But uh, stay safe, 73, and hope to work you on the band someday. Take care, and uh, till the next time. Goodbye.